bottom. I'm going to be introducing you to my mouse Basil today. He is an absolute sweetheart. And before I go into this, let me just preface this by saying a couple of things. Number one, I saved a mouse named Chamomile. I named him from a Starbucks. He got thrown away in a dumpster because he was stuck on a sticky pad. He was still alive. It was pouring rain. I went out and I found him, took him off the sticky pad, got all the sticky stuff off with some oil. So, honey, what? What? Athena is being a big baby. And yes, so I had rescued him. He was the best little pet. And so the thing about mice is that males are okay by themselves. However, they still are very social creatures. So I decided to get him a companion. So I got Basil. And Camille is no longer with us because of some very unfortunate events that I do not want to go into or I will start crying. <laughs> But I had him for like a month. He was awesome. Still have Basil. He's my little angel baby. Seriously, the best. Thing about males versus females. So, male mice, they can be by themselves. Females, on the other hand, I would suggest getting them in like groups of three. Uh, they are super social. They love to be held. They are much easier to handle. And they don't smell as bad. So I know a lot of places only sell female mice. They don't sell males, but um, the place I got mine from did, and I was very happy because it was kind of hard for me to find basil. Males, a little stinkier than females. Females like to be in groups. There you go. There you go. So now I guess I will show you basil, my little angel baby. Let me go get him. I'll be right back. Okay, so I have basil right here in his cute little hammock. Um, I will say... Basil and I have had a little bit of problems. He's been in and out of the vet a lot because he got lice, and I think it's from the pet store I got him from. So you'll notice he has lots of scabs on, especially on his ears right now. His face looks better and his neck looks better. But his right ear, well, I guess his left, my right when I look at him, it's still kind of bloody from him just scratching it compulsively. But he's doing a lot better, and usually... He comes out right away onto my hands, but I just woke him up from his nap because mice are nocturnal. They are very active at night. They sleep during the day. And he's such a good boy. He's such a good boy. Okay, so yes, this is Basil. My brown one, he was just like a field mouse, uh, was from, or uh, chamomile. He was chamomile. I kind of really like the herb slash like flower theme. I had going on. So yes, this is Basil. He's my pride and joy. I love him. And I love to give him kisses. And Chloe's probably going to be barking because she's going to want to see him. So a couple of things in regard to when they get lice or mites, which is actually really common for mice and rats, you pretty much have to deep clean their cage every couple of days, which was such a pain because I clean their, his cage anyway, you know, like I want it to be clean and nice for him. But when that happens, you have to deep clean it so bad, and it sucks, or you have to deep clean it a lot, and it just really sucks, but we're finally getting over it. He just, he's healing now. I'm so happy. Like I said, I had to give him so much medicine. We were in and out of the vet constantly, and it sucked, and a lot of people made fun of that because they're like, why? If he's just a mouse, why are you going through such great efforts? But it's like, he's my family, and I love him, and... I'm going to show you guys a few really cute things he does. So since he's been itching and stuff a lot, he loves to rub his face. All right, now the thing I'll say is he is albino and he has lots of, shh, he has lots of light sensitivity. So this might be a little painful, but he loves it when I rub his ears. Hi, honey. are just the biggest sweethearts especially like I said basil is my pride and my joy he is the biggest cuddler and I feel so bad for him because my cats and everything are so obsessed with him and the dogs you'll probably hear them bark a lot but he's such a good boy I just wish his ears and his neck looked better he lost a lot of hair his hair also looks a little greasy or his fur looks a little greasy because I had been putting um medicine on it and neosporin and things like that but he is so cute and he's my child. 
I've had basil here since July. I have the actual date in my phone, I think. He's cleaning himself. Shut up, Chloe. Chloe. So I adopted Basil on July 12th of this year, and when I got him, he was probably a, a month or two old, and he has poop coming out. It's nothing about uh, mice. They poop constantly. So if you want a little poop machine, get a mouse. They poop a lot. Mice are nocturnal. For every mouse you get, you should have a hiding spot, a separate food, and a separate water bottle, a separate food bowl, and then a water bottle. Chamomile, since he was wild, he actually drank out of a water bowl, which is okay. It's just really uncommon. They, you know, when they're from a pet store, they're used to the bottles. So he was used to the bottle. He would not drink from a bowl. But he's such a good boy. He's such a good boy. And uh, yeah, he's my little albino baby who loves to have ear and neck rubs. He just, he just loves his ear and neck rubs. He's a good boy. And he's really soft. I can't even tell you how soft mice are. It's um, like they're so cute and they have so much personality like chamomile was much faster he was always on the wheel he was always super active basil on the other hand he'll eat he'll cuddle he loves me he likes being around me and um he's a really good boy especially like I said we kind of bonded over his mites and the lice he had as weird as that sounds because when that happened that's when I started scratching him and I was holding him a lot and kissing him and that I don't know We've gotten a lot closer since that happened, but it doesn't really take long to grow a good bond with mice or small animals, rats, hamsters, gerbils, any of that. I mean, gerbils are a little crazy, but yeah, no, I honestly really do love mice. They are sweethearts. They, I have not once been bitten by him. But, oh, you're pooping again? Their teeth are constantly growing. They always need to have stuff in their cage to chew on, like woods, mineral chews, anything. <laughs> They really do need to have stuff to chew on. It's healthy for them. I use like toilet paper rolls and things like that. You don't really need the most expensive and like the best. Anything will really do. Give them fruits and vegetables like a treat once, maybe every day, every other day. Give them a good little seed and pellet blend. They need protein. They would typically in eat insects and you know plants out in the wild. So you need to make sure they're getting protein too. It's very important for their diet. He's a baby. He has a really big cage now since chamomile is no longer around and I've considered getting him a companion again, but my parents really don't want that to happen. So, shh. They really don't want that to happen. So right now it's just him and me and it's fine because he has gotten so much more cuddly now that he doesn't have a companion. As bizarre as that might sound because males, like I said, males are usually pretty good by themselves, but he, he's a good little boy. Shh, Chloe. So, yeah. If you're gonna get mice, you only need to clean their cage about once, twice a week. With him being by himself, I only really have to clean it like once a week and it's such a big cage so he has lots of space. Be mindful if you get mice that they are escape artists. Any bars that they can fit their head through or any gaps, holes they can fit their head through, their whole body will fit through. So I've had that problem with chamomile getting out. He doesn't seem to try as often, but some mice do. They are escape artists. They will get out. That's the same with rats. If they can fit their face through it, they're gonna squeeze their whole body through it. So just be mindful. For him, I have a terrarium with a topper. So it does have the netting and I did wrap it in chicken wire just to prevent him and chamomile from escaping. And they love it. They have lots of areas to climb. They have lots of space. I mean, one of them could stay on the top, the other could stay on the bottom. They were not in each other's way if they didn't want to be. So that worked really well for them. Um, and I really do miss having a second one. But luckily, he's gotten so much better and so much more social. And he loves to be kissed. Well, maybe not right now.
One other thing that's really cute about Basil is whenever he closes his eyes and I pet his ears or his neck, he'll sometimes make like little purring, chirping, clucking noises and that just means that they love you and they're happy and that's just the cutest thing I have ever heard. I'm gonna put him in his cage now and give you guys like a quick little cage tour. It's pretty awesome. Okay, so this is what his cage looks like. Um, the lighting's really bad, I'm, I apologize. So he does have the cage topper that is wrapped in chicken wire. And then he has, excuse me, dog. Then he has the little terrarium on the bottom. So here is his wheel. This is a silent wheel. He used to have a wire wheel, but it annoyed the freaking crap out of me. So, and that's his little wooden teeter-totter he likes to chew on, he'll hang out in. He does have a cardboard toilet paper roll. There's his little hammock. It's one of his favorite places to sleep, and he has some nesting material in there, which is just like a cotton. This is by KT, I believe the brand, and you can build it any way you want. I built it like that, and he loves to be in there and nest in there. He has made this little spot for himself. He likes to clean in. This is one of his food bowls. This one I leave empty because this is where his water bottle hangs and I like the water to drip into there if the dogs or cats hit it because they're watching him or whatever. I have a few other bowls for him like this one and this is just a bird feeder. I like it because I could put it on the side of the wooden cage. He absolutely loves this house. Excuse the poop. I only cleaned this like two days ago, three days ago. And he loves hiding there. He loves taking his treats and his fruits and vegetables in there. That's typically where he'll sleep. And this was always Basil's favorite. Chamomile didn't use it quite as much. He has a plastic wheel that is attached to the side of the cage. He does use that one from time to time. That was uh, his. And Chamomile liked that one. Chamomile usually hung out in this house when he hung out up here. So he liked the top. Chamomile will kind of stay in the bottom. I got him this little pepper. It's actually a hay feeder. You're supposed to stuff hay in it, but he actually likes to go in it because he's so small. And I got him this little critter bath because chamomile used to bathe himself in like sand and dust, like a, uh, like a chinchilla would, but he actually uses it as a litter box. He likes to pee in here. So pretty cute, honestly. So it's pretty much a mansion. Oh, let me fix his little, uh, his little, ramp so yeah he pretty much loves it he has lots of space to move around I really do suggest this setup he seems to like it quite well it really suited him and chamomile because they were never really on top of each other like I said unless they wanted to be and they're really happy in here so yeah he's my pride and joy really